But uh, what you're seeing here is a, a new, I wouldn't say a new look, but you'll notice that your uh, composer window with source record is floating, the timeline is floating, your bins are floating. In, in the latest release of Avid Media Composer, we've introduced a new profile. So just out of curiosity as well, you know, we, we changed the UI in 2019. We changed it with bin lock or the, uh, the bin containers and your panels can be docked and locked. So what I want to show you is when you uh, go and create a new user profile, you'll see here that when you are creating a new user, this is the way that, you know, you set up your keyboard, your windows, you know, anything that you want are customized. Because as you start editing and working, you know, you may not use a mouse. You might just be using the keyboard to actually function. So I'm going to go in and create a new user. And what I want to point out is we have different settings now for a user profile. How do you want to work? We have standard Media Composer, which basically is the 2019, where you have initially all of your panels are docked and locked to a canvas or a tree. You can pull that off and you can customize it. I'll actually show you what that does. So exactly. So the idea is we know that there are people using other NLEs, other editing software, and they look at Avid and they're like, we don't know how to use that. But I tell everyone, if you know source record, ins, outs, timeline, you basically know how to use an editing system. It's just getting past some of the other stuff. So first I want to show you transitioning from Adobe Premiere Pro. And what that does is I'm going to call my new profile PP Mike, and what happens is the entire UI and layout changes to mimic Adobe Premiere Pro. So it is Media Composer, but again, it's just the layout. It's your source record is large on the top. You have your timeline. You have all of your media management down here. And when you go to your settings, you'll see that the keyboard is a Premiere Pro default keyboard. We want you to embrace Avid Media Composer. We want you to easily transition from Adobe Premiere to Media Composer. Again, it's the tools that you use if you want to, you know, if you're going to a lot of television shows or studios here in LA, you will find that knowing Media Composer is a good thing to know. So we want you to do that. And another thing you may notice is when you are going to your settings, if you're using Resolve, we also have a default, default Resolve keyboard as well. So again, we want to bring in people using other NLEs. Now the other option when you are creating a new user profile is Media Composer Classic. It's like a classic car, right? <laughs> Basically what we're doing is we're saying if you choose Classic, it's going to float your bins, it's going to float your composer window and your timeline just like you had originally with version 2018 and earlier. So what you'll see is I already have one created, so I'm going to change my profile to go back to Classic MK. You'll see everything is now going to change, so everything is now floating as designed or as I want. Again, it's all customizing the way you want to work, which is the best thing about working with Media Composer. You'll also notice in between your source record, if you remember those six buttons, bless you, that went away, they're actually back. I mean, the buttons were still there, you just had to map them. So now we brought back those six buttons with the splice in, the tool palette, overwrite, uh, source record, trim, and effects. So those are all brought back right here. So again, it's those little things. We want to make it comfortable for people, whether you're starting off with a new version, whether you are coming from a Media Composer Classic, or uh, you're coming from Adobe Premiere, okay? So let's take a look at a few other things here. Now I am gonna, I'm gonna dive into a few things that you may not know that the software uh, did if you are using it just as you're working. Now these are all workspaces and the workspaces are actually set up to actually view you know, a different workspace for editing, color, effects, audio. As you customize new workspaces, which are just the layout of your UI, you can customize it, you can map to a key so things will change as you work. But one thing I wanna point out which is interesting is people start moving between these workspaces is how do you want the UI to react? And by going into the user settings here again in the interface, 
I just want to point out something that a lot of people didn't know. In the lower left hand corner, when moving to a workspace, do I want to load the last known state or the last saved state? So this is interesting. A lot of people are like, when I go in between the workspaces, it doesn't go back to the way that I wanted it, the way that I saved it. That's because the setting might be changed. So if you find that's happening, please go in and check your when moving to a workspace, how is that reacting? The last known state is the last state that it was. But the last saved state is when you save a workspace and layout, it'll actually go back to that. Just something that I like to point out every now and then.